Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be trying out the brand new collection from Beauty Bay. I've been pretty impressed by previous eyeshadow palettes from Beauty Bay, so I have high expectations right now. I have got the brand new New Romantic palette. As you can see, I haven't opened it or, or anything. I haven't even gotten it out of the box. And I also got the New Romantic Liquid Quist... <laughs> Quistle? The Liquid... <laughs> <laughs> the Liquid Crystal Eyeshadow Trio that I have open and swatched because I needed something to satisfy my impatience a little bit. So we'll look at the details, we're gonna try it on, we're gonna see how it goes, and as I said, really high expectations. For those of you who have been on my channel before as well, you may have noticed that we have a new background. I have completely redone my setup, I've moved everything around the room, we don't have a door frame in the background anymore, we don't have a light switch, you know, all this stuff that we could see. And I was gonna say I don't match it anymore, but I kinda do right now, because I don't have any blush or eyeshadow or anything. And, you know, this, <laughs> this top is not helping. But yeah, anyway, I've redone everything. I have so much more space. I've made changes to the lighting. I have switched my lens so that we can start zooming in and out again. I'm pretty excited, so we're gonna see how it goes. And then once I'm happy with everything, what I will do is do a setup video for you guys. So that'll probably be a few weeks. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. You're all here for one reason. Let's jump into the details for this palette. So this is the new romantic palette from Beauty Bay. This is part of their 20 pan eyeshadow palette collection. The packaging is absolutely, absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that. And then as always on the inside, we have bubble wrap. So you know it's really well protected. I know they've completely redone all their branding and this matches the branding for their other palettes, but does this not remind you guys of Makeup Obsession? Like, I feel like the writing is really similar. Give me a second. I mean, maybe it's just because they're in capitals and in italic, but yeah, it does It does remind me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so the packaging for the palette is cardboard, and this one is just pink, as you can see, and then we have the same pattern in the name. As I said, we have 20 eyeshadows in this palette. They individually weigh 1.4 grams, which is really, really good. And the palette is 15 pounds, so it's the exact same details as for the Sunset Horizons or the Book of Magic palette. And in terms of value for money, we're really, really good with these palettes. We're only looking at 54p per gram. So if the quality is there, which it has been with previous palettes, these are a really, really good deal. In terms of information that we get on the box, we have like a little blurb, I guess, about the palette. And you find that both on the box and on the palette itself. And then the ingredients are only listed on the box. So for whatever reason, you need to keep hold of the ingredient list. Do make sure that you keep hold of the box. The palette has a shelf life after opening of 12 months and it is both cruelty free and vegan. And it doesn't say really anywhere eyeshadow or pressed pigment, but there is a warning just down here right at the bottom saying some colors contain pigments, which according to US law may not be suitable for use in the eye area. It doesn't specify which colors in particular do contain these pigments, but again, you've got the full ingredient lists here. Let's finally open it up and here it is is there we go let me take this off what palette does it remind me of it reminds me of another palette and i can't put my finger on it right now it's actually a lot more varied than it looked online i would say like i feel like online on instagram i was basically only seeing like reds and burgundies but we do have some pinks at the top we do have a few golds and then is that a black at the bottom it's not quite black i don't think it's pretty close but it's not quite black we do also have a nice light beige at the top we've got different tones of browns actually so that's going to be really nice for different skin tones if i had to say that anything was missing, I would say maybe a white. I mean, maybe it would have been a bit blood sugar, but I feel like it would have just been um, been nice to have it in there. And then we have a nice big mirror up here and the names are printed on the palette, which we always like to see. Um, and yeah, that's it for the details. So let's see how this swatches. Ooh, okay. These feel really velvety. They feel really, really nice, the mattes. So let's start off with the shade Vanilla. That is a really, really nice light beige, actually. That's really light, even on me. I really appreciate that being in there. Then we have birthday. Very, very cute. I wouldn't mind comparing this to some of the other light pinks that they've had. Let me know if you guys want like a swatch comparison video because I feel like there's a few palettes that I want to compare to this one. And next up is our first metallic which is Oyster. Oh, okay. That's really pretty. That's really, really cute actually. That's quite a nice colour. Next up is Flamingo. Then we have Lingerie. Milkshake. And you can see that these are a little bit powdery, but I feel like that's always the case with Beauty Bay eyeshadows. I'm not quite sure I'm gonna say the next shade name right. I don't know what it is, but it is Chint. And it is 
absolutely stunning. I don't really feel like I have a lot of other shades like this one. Very, very pleased with how this looks. Then we have Claret. Oh, these mattes are very, very dusty. <laughs> and then we have Queen. Okay, I really like the look of that one. There are some gorgeous metallics in here. And then the last shade from this one is Smoothie. I mean, that could be a palette by itself, couldn't it? It's very, very pretty, very, very lovely swatches. I am definitely gonna be using this. Look at that. Absolutely stunning, very reflective as always. I feel like so far this looks like what we've come to expect from Beauty Bay eyeshadows. Ooh, I definitely think we're gonna have some staining though. Look at that. So next up we have a metallic which is called Penny. Just a lovely copper, it's not like the most exciting of colours but it is pretty. Then we have Embers and then we have Raspberry, Oh, <laughs> look at that. That is very, very nice. Okay, next up we have Mars. Then we have Royal and oh my god, oh my god, look at how beautiful that one is. It's the metallics that are doing it for me, they're really, really nice. Then we have Muffin, yeah, I mean it's a brown. Oh, next up is a really interesting shade, this is Khaki. I don't think I have a gold like that in my collection at all, that's really, really nice. That would actually work really nicely with my Queen Bee palette from W7, the dupe for the Naked Honey. Then Saddle. Our last metallic, which is Valentine. Oh, that's so pretty. And then lastly, we have Ink, which is crumbled everywhere. So yeah, so far, all three of the palettes in this format have a black, I think. I mean, it's nice to have it in the palette. If you're only getting one of them, it is quite nice. But again, wouldn't have minded having a white in there. I think this gives me Huda Beauty, what was the first one, the rose? I've forgotten the name, but the first palette, because it has got those pinks and then the gold. So I think it's giving me those same vibes. Those are some good metallics. I'm very, very excited to get them on the eye. And then lastly, before we jump into the eye look, we just have the Liquid Crystal Eyeshadow Trio. This was £15, but you can also buy the three shades individually. They are £6, so you are saving £3 by getting all three of them together. And they are just all in shades that match the palette, basically. So let me swatch them. So the first one is called Sardonyx. So this is the darkest one of the three, and it is the only glittery one. I'm just trying to catch the reflections. It is a very pretty shade. Next up is Car Carnelian, Carnelian, I'm not sure. I think this one does have glitter as well, actually. Let's see. Yeah, okay, this one does have glitter in it, but I feel like it's not as obvious in the first one, which is why I remembered that incorrectly. And then our third one is Morganite, which is a duochrome. And here it is, it's like a red to gold. You're only seeing it pink on screen, but it does have a more golden shift. These all contain 4.5 milliliters of product, and I think this is the new packaging for the liquid shadows going forward. It looks like they've updated them for all of them. So I'm just gonna go and remove those swatches. I'm gonna go prime my eyes with my P. Louise base, and then we'll jump into the eye look. Okay, there we go, all up close and personal. I'm gonna try and stay in frame and in focus, and <laughs> we're gonna see how it goes, because I have no idea. So I'm gonna start off with the shade Claret. I'm gonna pick it up pretty carefully because it's pretty powdery and I've already got my base done. I'm gonna take that on a Morphe M124 and I'm going to pack that on. Ooh, yeah, dusty. I'm gonna draw out the shape that I'm going for for my crease. And I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna bring it back up and stretch it out. The pigmentation on this first shade is very pretty. There we go, look at how easy that was. I really didn't have to dip back in all that much. And it's pretty even as well. I feel like this is gonna work really, really well with the Book of Magic palette. Like, I feel like they're gonna be really nice to use together. May have to do that at some point. So next up, why don't we go into, where is it? Let's go into Smoothie, which isn't coming out as bright on camera as it is in real life. It's like pretty neon -y. I'm taking a Sigma E36, and even though this is a softer brush, that just picked up so much pigment. Yeah, it's a really powdery palette. I won't be using it with my foundation already done again, and it's just for today. Yeah, 
Now that's blending out absolutely fine. I really don't feel like I have to dip back in and pick up too much product. So far, it does not disappoint. And then I'm gonna take a clean E36, and this time I'm gonna go into Flamingo. Again, really powdery, be careful with it. And I'm just gonna blend again. I have had some eyeshadows in the past that just haven't worked with these um, Sigma E36 brushes, and that is absolutely not the case at all today. This is blending beautifully. Yeah, nothing, nothing bad to say about that. That's blended out so easily. I don't feel like it's taken me too long. Really, really pleased with those crease colors. I think I'm just gonna go back in with my second brush. Just go back in with a little bit of milkshake. But other than that, I don't feel like we've lost any of the first colors. Like I feel like you can see a nice gradient. And then I'm just gonna go back over the edge with my last E36, although I haven't added any extra product. I'm just gonna highlight the brow bone, so I'm just gonna take a small flat brush and I'm gonna go into the shade Oyster. Might be a little bit dark, but we'll see. Just gonna pop it on. Ooh. Hope it's coming across on camera. It is very shiny. A little bit golden for me. It's not normally a shade that I would go for, but when it's highlighting, I'm pretty happy with that. And then just back in with the E36 that I used with the lighter shade just to blend over that edge one last time. I'm just gonna go and cut my crease off camera and then I'll be right back. Okay, so this isn't my most precise cut crease. I'm not super happy with it, but I'm gonna come and add some details anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna jump back into the palette and I'm gonna start off with the shade Valentine down here, just on a small flat brush and these pick up really, really well. Oh my God. And I'm gonna do the inside and the outside of that cut crease. Ooh. That is packing on beautifully. That might even be packing on even better than the ones in the Book of Magic palette. Okay, we definitely have fallout. To be fair, that's the first fallout that we've had, which I'm kind of surprised about. Next up on another flat brush, I think this time I'm gonna take the shade Queen. Maybe a little bit more digging involved in this one. And I'm gonna pop that next to the first shade. Oh, that is really pretty actually. I feel like they're kind of blending themselves out as I'm going. I'm just gonna jump back into a little bit of Valentine, just to help finish that off. Again, it's not a lot of work. And then just a bit more of Queen. And then in the middle again, just using another flat brush, this time I'm gonna take Chintz. I do feel like I'm digging a little bit more into this one again, but it is the lighter shade, so I don't know, it kind of makes sense. Let's see how it applies. Okay, I'm digging in a bit more. It does feel more creamy. Ow, but it's swatched so nicely. Ooh, very chunky. This reminds me of the lighter shade in the Book of Magic palette, the kind of pearly silver that I feel I do have to dig in more and again is a bit more chunky. So I don't know if that's just something that happens all the time with the lighter shades. I'm just gonna try a Zoeva 231 instead. Just see if that makes any difference. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, right, there is a lot of digging, but we are getting there. And I think because it is a bit creamier, I would just recommend using more, more of a fluffy brush like the one I've got now. Not as exciting as I thought it would be when I swatched it, but I feel like the three shades next to each other, they do work really, really well. And then again, I'm just gonna go back into the previous shade, which was Queen. It's looking quite bright now actually, isn't it? Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. Um, so yeah, just a bit of Queen, just to go in and blend everything in again together. And then again with Chintz. Okay, so again, just a little bit of extra 
extra work than I would have wanted on that last shade, which is a bit of a shame. I mean, the overall effect is really pretty. The shade is gorgeous. I'm gonna go back into, where is it, Claret, and I'm taking a Zoeva 231, and I'm just gonna finish up the lower lash line, and I have concealer, and it is set, and that's packing on pretty well. Ooh, can't complain about that. I've not even had to pick up any more product. That's pretty good, I've done that in one go. Pretty happy with that. And then for the front half, I do really, really want to try the shade Khaki. So I'm taking a Morphe M138. Let's see what happens. Do I just try and pack it on? Okay. I don't necessarily think this is the right brush to do this with. A flat brush would probably be better, but all of mine are dirty right now, basically. Okay, it's not bad. I feel like I would prefer it if it was a little bit more sparkly. I might go over it with a with a liquid shadow in a second. But it's actually packed on okay. It needed a couple of layers, but that wasn't bad. I'm just gonna go back in with the brush flom flom <laughs> from Claret just to blend out in the middle. But I haven't picked up any more product. They do blend in together really nicely. And then just taking a really small flat brush, I think I am just gonna take a little bit of ink. It is really, really powdery again, really pigmented. And and I just want to darken the outer corner. Yeah, we have some fallout. Oh, okay, that is maybe quite a bit darker than I expected it to be. I'm just going to take the brush from Claret. Bring it up into the bottom of that cut crease. Okay, I kind of regret doing that. I'm just adding a bit more of Claret back on. Okay, I'm just going to try and get rid of the fallout, and I'm probably failing. I'm just going to take my Ofra Verified Liquid Liner and just do a wing. Right, that wing's gone a little bit more dramatic and a little bit thicker than I wanted it to, but that's fine. I'm going to fix it in a second. I want to add, like, a double liner, I guess, in between the cut crease and the crease. So I'm going to start off with the shade Polka Dot from Sheen Cosmetics. I can't believe I forgot what they were called for a second. I think I could probably do with lowering this camera some more. I'm going to start lining the cut crease. And then I think I'm also just going to take some underneath the liner. Right, I've just tried lowering the camera to see if that helps a little bit. I'm also going to jump into the liquid eyeshadow in Carn Carnelian, Carnelian, I don't really know. And I'm going to use it with another Pro Arte Master Stroke brush. I'm just going to pick it off here. I'm going to try and do a line above. Okay, it's kind of working. It's doing what I need it to do. Okay, that's done what I needed it to. I did have a little bit of transfer right here, which is where I always get transfer. So I just went back over with the Sheen Cosmetics liner. I do just want to do my inner corner. So I'm just going to grab some more of Oyster, just on a Zoeva 231. And then what I think I am going to do as well, because I do just want to make that lower lash line a bit more sparkly, I'm going to take the original Liquid Crystal eyeshadow in Pyrite. It's just a really nice gold, which should match the shade underneath quite well. I'm just going to take the Zoeva 231 I'm using, and I'm going to pop some on top. I'm just going to do my waterline now with my Revlon So Fierce Final Eyeliner in Righteous Ram. And then I think I might add some gems and maybe some hearts. I've got these ones from uh, from, 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 from Makeup or Breakup. I'm gonna get a few on on the crease, I think. Well, brow bone, technically. Might put some underneath as well, just to hide the sins. <laughs> And then I'm thinking maybe a couple of gems, like some little ones from this multicolor set. And I'm gonna do a couple of clear ones as well. Okay, there we go. So there is the eye look. I feel like the gems really do knock it up a notch. I'm just gonna go and quickly finish the rest of the look off off camera 
and then I'll come back and we'll have a chat about the palette. All right, guys, here is the finished look. I hope, as always, that you like it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking at myself in the mirror and in the monitor, and I'm like, I kind of look like a cupcake. Like, this is very over the top, this is very pink. I've gone really heavy on the blush, I've got some fake freckles on, and I'm like, yeah, cupcake, love it. Oh no, the palette's all dirty already. My desk as well is such a mess. Like this is a pigmented palette. You will get eyeshadow everywhere. I'm gonna have to clean this afterwards. Anyway, let's have a chat about my final thoughts on this palette. Quality wise, I don't really have anything bad to say. I think it kind of met my expectations. The only shade that did let me down a little bit was chintz because I did have to dig into it quite a lot. But again, I feel like that's something that had happened in the Book of Magic palette as well. Overall, the quality was very comparable. The mattes, yeah, nothing nothing bad to say about the mattes. Didn't think I had too much fallout either considering how powdery they were, so they did stick to my base really, really well. The metallics also worked pretty well. I didn't have too many issues packing them on. I felt like they blended in together really well. So yeah, quality-wise, nothing bad to say about this. This has met my expectations. I feel like I'm maybe a little bit less excited in this video than I was in the Book of Magic one, and that's not because I think this is a bad palette, not at all. I think the quality is absolutely there. I think for me, this colour scheme is just a little bit less exciting than the one in the Book of Palette. What? Book of Palette? <laughs> Wait, Book of Magic? Um, yeah, the Book of Magic was just a bit more me. They're just colours that I can see myself reaching for all the time. Whereas this just doesn't get me quite as excited. But if this is a colour scheme that you do like, again, the quality is there and you do have a good variety of slightly more nude shades and then the more bright ones. So again, really a good option. This colour scheme does really remind me of the Huda Rose Gold palette. The more I look at it, if you are someone who did want to try the original larger Huda palettes. I mean, I even feel like, you know, this gives me Desert Dusk vibes. You know, they are expensive, so if you want a more affordable option, I would go for this one instead, because in terms of value for money and quality, I think that Beauty Bay have done a really good job again. So that is it for today's video, guys. I hope that, like, the lighting and the sound was all okay, because if this is now a third video that I can't post, I may just have a breakdown. Not that I haven't already had several breakdowns alongside reorganising in this room. Hopefully I didn't go too out of frame and it wasn't too out of focus. We will find out when I edit this. But if you do have any feedback, do please leave it in the comments. I would love to know what you think of the new setup and the lighting and everything. If you enjoyed the video, then do please as always make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment, letting me know what you thought of it. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next video. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye guys.